So how does one solve indirect proportion math problems? Hi, I'm Jimmy Chang. I've been teaching college mathematics for nine years. And indirect proportion problems sounds very technical, but as long as you are able to see what kind of problems they are, you might have solved them before, maybe just under a different name. Now, indirect proportion problems, the key word here is indirect. Now, indirect is actually another way of saying the word inverse. Now, whenever you have the word inverse, that means that the unknown, let's just call it x, x will be in the denominator. So, when that happens, you know that there's going to be some solving going on, and because x is in the denominator, it makes it a little bit difficult, but it doesn't have to be as long as you know how to solve proportion problems. So here's a quick example for you. Suppose you have 3 over 4 equals to 7 over x. This is an example of an indirect proportion problem because you have an x in the denominator. But if you know how to solve proportion problems, you'll know that the strategy here is to cross multiply. So as we've been doing before, and perhaps you've learned this in other areas, if you cross multiply, you take the denominator and then you multiply it with the numerator on the other side. So that means you have 4 times 7, which is going to give you 28. On the other side, you take the denominator, which is x, and you multiply it with the other numerator on the other side. So x times 3 is going to give you 3x. And so all of a sudden, your fraction equation is not so tough anymore. Now to solve this, all you need to do, of course, is divide both sides by 3. So as a result, the 3's cancel. The 3 doesn't quite cancel with the 28, so it stays where it is. So as a result, you have x is equal to 28 thirds. And so you have a solution. So once you know what an inverse proportion, which is related to indirect proportions, it's smooth sailing from there. I'm Jimmy Chang, and that's exactly how you solve indirect proportion math problems.